Hi, and welcome to the So Many Things YouTube channel. I'm Tim, your host. Here, you get to sew with the boys, quilt with the boys, embroider with the boys, and of course, mostly, have some fun, and you might learn something along the way. Stay tuned! Hi, and welcome to Quilting with the Boys. Today, we're going to talk about the rail fence quilt block. It's really easy and you can use three, four, five, however many rails or strips that you want to create your block. You can see here, I've got a nice rainbow assortment of fabrics, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing about a rail fence is it's really simple. It's a matter of combining strips together to create a block. Now, a rail fence could be three strips, four strips, five strips, six strips, whatever number of strips you wish to work with, you will need to adjust the size of each strip for the overall size of your block that you're creating. An easy one is a nine and a half inch block is three three and a half inch strips. When you combine three three and a half inch strips, you automatically come up with a nine and a half inch finished square if you did your sewing correctly and watched your quarter inch seam allowance. So here I've laid out five strips because I'm going to be working on five strips in my rail fence block. Now, I happen to like this fabric line, so I stuck within the, the color range and the color selection within this particular fabric line, but I can move these around to create different effects. As you can see here, this one's a little darker. This is much lighter than the rest of them. This one's a little bit more bright intensity because of the coloring it kind of pops at your eye a little bit more. So I wanted to work on the ordering as well. That's a very key important factor in doing a rail fence. I want to start with a dark edge. So I'm going to put my darkest fabric farthest from me and I'm going to bring the rest of the colors coming towards me. So that's my starting color is my dark purple. I don't want to go purple, blue, red like a, like a rainbow. I want to have a little variation. So purple, well green isn't next to purple but I can make it next to purple and that will kind of tone down my green a little bit. So that's my first two strips that I'm going to sew together. My purple and my green. Now I've got to have another strip in the middle. I'm going to go with the pink in the middle, only because I want the pink to have that little, nice little hot look in the center. And then my next strip, I'm going to use the blue, because I like blue, and I like, think the blue will look good next to the pink. And then I'm going to finish with that little yellow strip on the end. So here are my five strips that I would create to do my rail fence block. I would sew these two together. I would sew these two together and then I would combine this set with the one edge of this and this set with the other edge to create my finished row or my finished strata of strips. Now these are full length strips of the width of the fabric. They're going to be cut to whatever width you need them to be for your block. As I said before, a three and a half inch strip works great for a nine and a half inch block. But I'm using five, so if I was to do a little math, my strips would be like 1.92 inches to get five of them evenly into a nine and a half inch unfinished block. I'm going to play with that a little bit as long as my blocks come out to be square. So this is the order in which I'm going to sew. So I'm going to show you what happens after you've stitched them all together and you can start playing with the blocks. So now you can see I've sewn my strips together, my purple, my green, my pink, my blue, and my yellow. And how you build your quilt is basically how you lay these blocks together. I've got another block next to it and now I can create a line. My dark line will track here, so if my next block, I would have a dark one here, so this block would be repeated here to continue that line. I'm going to show you that in a minute on another pattern that's already set, but you can make these very simply in one set of strips, you cut them into the desired block you want, and you simply attach the blocks. Have some fun when you lay them out, because that's where the real fun and the real creativity with the rail fence comes in. Seaming is important and you want to make sure that your seams and your pieces that are exposed are even. The slightest little wave in your seam can be exaggerated in a finished block. So here's an example of rail fence. You can see that you can create patterning in it by how you place your blocks. You can see that the blocks, these blocks have three strips in them and this block is the same as this block, it's just turned and then this is the same position as this block. How you place them in relationship to each other allows you to create interesting lines of patterns following the lights and darks in the fabric. How 
about a little bonus? Well, you know, the rail fence is a really easy block to do, but we can have some fun with it. What's that you said? What did I do to it? I took my little cutter and I cut it into four pieces. So now I have four pieces to work with to create one block. I can turn these around and make them all sorts of things of interest just to create some other blocks to work with. Just some thoughts for you to play with. Don't forget that you can always flip these blocks around, put them back together in different orders so that you can have different sets to them. It's all fun in games. Well, you know, it's all fun in games until somebody gets hurt. You want to make a rectangle block? Make a rectangle block. Look at the patterning. See, you can have all sorts of fun, fun things to do with it. Let's put these over here. See, now I've created another block. So there's lots of things to play with. Be adventuresome. Cut that rail fence block up into smaller pieces and move them around. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.